Welcome back to the second part of our topic on mental health in our Scripture over social media series. Part one, we started to delve into this topic uh, about what it meant for our two panelists and their journey to understanding it and living with their personal struggles with mental health. We're going to get into some more specific topics like medication, coping strategies, uh, how mental health is uh, potentially interconnected with other aspects of physical health or faith too. Thanks so much for listening with us and we look forward to learning with you. I think so with my OCD, I so well, another one of the early books that I read, I've read a lot of books on OCD, which is actually one of the symptoms that you have OCD, <laughs> ironically. But uh, one, one of them was called The Boy Who Couldn't Stop Washing. And uh, it was this like, so I remember as a kid and I didn't have a name for it. I didn't have a label. And it wasn't until I saw, I you might not be old enough, our younger uh, viewers wouldn't remember this, but there was a, a afternoon talk show called Donahue. Old and enough. just the fact that I watched enough. Donahue at like 11 years old was weird in <laughs> itself. But uh, I remember seeing an episode about mental health and uh, one and different diagnoses. And one of them was OCD. And I remember hearing the symptoms of like constant checking, constant, um, you know, checking of ovens, checking of uh, uh, um, what I, alarm clocks, checking of door locks. Um, and for that matter, washing in fear of contamination. And at that time, I probably, if I had to guess, washed my hands 80 to a hundred or more times a day. And to the point that my hands were like, raw. yeah, raw and knuckles bleeding in the, and, um, you could say like, I could logically walk through, this isn't helping you. This isn't, this is hurting you, but I couldn't get myself to stop. And so what you're saying about like faulty input, like I know I can like detach and know that there's something illogical about this, mm -hmm. but I nonetheless can't figure out how to stop the behavior mm -hmm. um, and, and figure out how to calm the restlessness inside of me that can only seems to come through washing or whatever else. So yeah, other people, uh, I, I also think it's, you know, one of the reasons why things like support groups where other people have similar uh, issues and it's like, ah, you too. Yeah. You know, like people it, it, finding strength in that. And I think the church should be one of the most transparent places about those types of struggles okay. so that you can find uh, somebody else that says like, ah, yeah, you too. You know, I can find strength in, in your vulnerability too. Um, oh, go can ahead. Can I just say, and I, I think it's just such a great way like to learn so much to even, you know, I mean, three people here that, you know, s struggle with mental health in different ways. And I feel like sometimes culture, um, can, and, and, and even Christians yeah. can put this like wrap it in the neat little bow of like, Oh, depression, anxiety, boom, we can define it. And it's, and that's it Yeah, where like, I, I'm hearing both of you talk and there are some things that I'm like, Oh, I, I view that differently. I'm mm -hmm. trying to think of what yeah. you just said that, um, Oh, mm -hmm. like how your, your physical health, plays a takes a toll when you know your mental health is mm -hmm. you know not in the best state and mm -hmm. i with my journey i've discovered that some of my mental health issues have been um an effect of physical health issues yes yeah. Yeah. um so the other way just yeah. how everyone yeah. is so different um mm -hmm. i just think it's a great way for us to destigmatize things and we can learn from each other. And it's not this, it's yeah. not mental health is one size fits all, which means yeah. then the mm -hmm. solutions are not one size fits all. Yeah. So that is, that's a great, uh, other thing that I think is, is frustrating, uh, when other people are trying, trying to help you, but they have like a simplistic, there's that old like adage that if the only tool you have in your toolbox is a hammer, every <laughs> problem is just a nail. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think, you know, um, a lot of times people will give a simplistic answer to like, well, just get more sleep or just eat different or just drink more water. Yeah. Like, drink more water. Yeah. Solves everything. Hydration is the problem of everything. Um, so that's actually the next question I wanted to ask you about though, is the interplay between, uh, and what I want to add to this too, is also like spiritual health. So emotional and psychological health, physical health and spiritual health, like, what's the correlation and what's, what's the causation from your perspective, uh, throughout life? What has that been? Can you hear the question? Yeah. Sorry. It's a, it's a, yeah. 
It's a hard <laughs> one. It's the, if everybody has kind of a simplistic, so like if you go to a nutritionist hmm. and you are uh, uh, have anxiety and depression, they're going to say like, oh yeah, adjust your diet like this. Hmm. If you go to a uh, cognitive behavioral therapy a therapist, they're going to say like, well, you need to adjust your thoughts mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. If you go to a psychiatrist, they might say, well, you need to adjust your internal chemistry like this. Mm -hmm. And it's like they, everybody has this like singular lens. Mm -hmm. And what's one of the things that's super interesting to me in the Bible is there's the, the story of Elijah mm -hmm. and yes. the prophets of Baal. And, and in first Kings 19, there's a situation where uh, he's depressed after a victory, but he's just emotionally exhausted. You can tell he's exhausted about life. He feels very alone uh, in his struggles and, and that sort of thing. And God sends like an angel to comfort him. But the angel uh, makes like soup for him. Uh, the angel tells him to take a nap. Uh, the angel has him get up and move. The angel says there's 7,000 other believers in Israel that have not bowed the knee to Baal and they're still worshipers of God. So find family and community in them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not just one thing. It's not simplistic because these things, physical, emotional, spiritual, they play off one another. If you disbelieve things about God, uh, if you don't believe there is a God out there and you feel, you feel hopeless mm -hmm. and then it affects your overall physical health, it's like spiritual, emotional, and physical all working with one another. Mm -hmm. Have you had any uh, inklings for yourself about what's causing what? Uh, like, I know we, we said thoughts and emotions and feelings, but like, uh, is this for, for you, is it um, mental health stuff? Is it a spiritual issue? Mm -hmm. Is it a primarily a physical issue? Uh, or is it like a psychological issue? Or how do those work together? So I asked the question much <laughs> bigger than what you were asking for, but um, yeah, I guess um, I think the comment I was going to make is that I do think that my I felt lately that my mental health has been more of a spiritual battle mm -hmm. that it is something that is being used to like for me to like distance myself from God or the result is that I feel like distancing myself from God. And there's a lot to sort of unpack there. Like why, when I'm feeling mm -hmm. low, do I have the inclination to just push away? Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Um, it's just illogical. <laughs> and I know that. Well, but, but common. Kind of same before. Yeah. yeah. That I, you know, I just, I feel really, really alone. Um, and so then, you know, all, um, rather than, you know, seeking like fellowship with God, like I'll just sometimes be a little bitter about it. Kind of yeah. like, why aren't you making me feel better? Yeah. So some of that. So then of course I look for comfort elsewhere. Um, so, but as I've gotten older, I've recognized that more that it really is like for me as a spiritual battle. Um, and just, you know, that at our time on earth, um, <laughs> at our time on earth it really is like distinct from our time you know, with God in heaven. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I really feel that, that distance yes. a lot, you know, through my mental health struggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. what you're saying about, I, that's really interesting. Whenever I do like pastoral counsel and people like there's a disconnect between knowing God is present and feeling God be present. And there's mm -hmm. a longing to feel God's presence in those moments. And again, you almost mm -hmm. have, gonna have to go with what you know and talk that down into your heart a little bit. Mm -hmm. What about for you, Steph? Any combination of the physical and emotional and spiritual? I mean, I can pinpoint what what part of what I feel is what. Um, I would say for the most part, it's spiritual because um, so how I see, you know, my different emotions is my like my people pleasing behaviors and is is a coping mechanism for making sure that people don't see me angry yeah and my anger is a coping mechanism for not being sad okay well why am i sad and it's this feeling of hopelessness because my thoughts are you know i'm not i'm not good enough yeah, yeah. Uh, people don't love me um that feeling of rejection yeah and that all points back to um i mean like I know that I'm a child of God and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. um, but if, if, <laughs> okay. So I think about, 
I emailed you a couple of months ago because <laughs> I had a lot of anxiety <laughs> when my cat <laughs> attacked. Yeah. And I had said, like, I, I've been praying every day. I've been listening to worship music. Like, why do I still have so much anxiety? Um, it was the most recent time that I'd, like, been struggling mm-hmm. with anxiety so much that I would just break down anytime. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's this... Um, this notion that God never promises to take away any pain until we're in heaven. And so he's going to be there with us in the storm. And I guess that's why for the most part, um, I try and point it back to like, where is my spiritual life lacking? Because I mean, at the end of the day, none of us can say that we were perfect because we're not, we're sinners. Um, I mean, there are definitely other instances in my life um like specifically there's when i when my depression was a lot worse um it was definitely 100% related to um to medical issues i had found out that i had adrenal fatigue mm-hmm. and when you are fatigued your body all it wants to do is sleep yeah yeah and i went years where i slept my life away i didn't go to church i didn't go hang out with friends. Yeah. I slept on college choir tours. Yeah. You know, I I really slept my life away. And because I was sleeping so much, I thought that I had like horrible depression. Mm-hmm. And then after I discovered these physical issues um, and I started healing my body, um, I didn't need to sleep anymore. And yeah. so my depression went away. So I will say for my personal yeah. story, some mm-hmm. of it mm-hmm. is physical, yeah, sure. but yeah. yeah, I feel like you can always point it back to this. There's always a spiritual aspect of I, it. I think that's yeah. super self-aware what you're talking about, like in, in identity and uh, what people perceive of me and the fact that we're living for a verdict. All of that de- definitely is like spiritual language that comes from, you know, I, I don't fully, I know I'm a child of God, but I there's a part of me that doesn't fully believe it or think that's enough or something like that. And the maturation process of a Christian is growing to accept that more. And that gives me, that gives me strength. I also like you mentioned uh, the concept of storms. And I think most humans, what we want to do in the middle of a storm is we want the storm to go away. And uh, what's interesting, one of the reasons it's such a fascinating analogy, like when Jesus pushes his disciples out into uh, the middle of the Sea of Galilee and it storms and they freak out. And he's like, the the storm out there can't hurt you. You need to calm the storm on the inside. And the interesting thing is if you can learn to calm the storm on the inside, because you can't actually do a whole lot about the storms on the outside. There's very little you can do to control the weather, right? Like mm-hmm. that's a, that's a God controlled <laughs> thing, God sovereign thing. But if you can figure out how to calm the storm on the inside, it doesn't matter what storms you get into in life. You're going to be fine, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think that is the where the mastering, the leveraging scripture, leveraging promises of God and saying like, nope, I know this to be true and I'm going to speak it down into my heart mm-hmm. and calm my heart and I'll be, then I'll be stronger to face whatever moving forward. But I also, the, the spiritual component of it, there's this thing that Paul says in, in Ephesians 6, like when he says, your, your struggles in life really aren't against flesh and blood. They're against the the powers of this dark world mm-hmm. and the spiritual forces of the heavenly realm. Mm-hmm. And even the idea of like, okay, so we know there's a chemical component and a brain chemistry component. We know there's probably a nature component and what you learn in the environment growing up of how do, how do we self-medicate in this household? Mm-hmm. You know, like that kind of thing. Is it food? Is it drinking? Is it whatever? Um, and But there's also this like spiritual force component of like, maybe, you know, according to the Bible, there's demons around all over the place mm-hmm. and they're studying you and they watch whenever you, you're you vulnerable at. Mm-hmm. And so they're trying to trick you into thinking certain things about yourself and throw off how you process things and that, and all of it works together. And, um, you know, fortunately God has given us a lot of different things to deal with it. And, and one of those things, and I wanted to ask you about, cause I get this question from Christians all the time is about like medication. So I think every Christian understands that, yep, if my faith goes up, that probably would help my anxiety, depression. Uh, a lot of Christians are, uh, I think professional counseling has become destigmatized in a way that, again, it, it 
There was a stigma attached to it when I was a kid that there just isn't today. Mm -hmm. People are much, mm -hmm. much more open about it. Um, I, th I still hear a certain amount of uh, fear attached to things like medication. Mm -hmm. And it's like, will this change me as a person? Not to mention there's often side effects mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious if you have any thoughts about Christians who are considering something like taking medication for anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. or, or any other kind of mental health issue. Mm -hmm. Well, I think our discussion about the physical component and how mm -hmm. that interplays with mental health, I feel like kind of answers that question. Yeah. I mean, a lot of what, it, um, so I um, have been on medication in the past. Um, I'm actually currently looking for some more effective medication. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually not at anything. So yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I am, I am absolutely 100% um, for using medication um, with the expectation that it's like any other medication, it has its limitations. Yeah. If it yep. is enough of a quote unquote, you know, like a pain relief or enough relief for me to move through my day, then that's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I really think that sometimes the misunderstanding of like somehow, and this really, I think is a very Western kind of thought that your brain and your body are somehow separate. Separate, yeah. Not at all. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, me taking antidepressants or an anti-anxiety is all it's like taking a pain reliever sure but on a mm -hmm. on a mental plane rather than a nerve plane and it works with chemicals yeah with, with neurotransmitters it's not doing anything magical in your body anyway mm -hmm. so. i like that you said that it's you know it's like pain relievers mm -hmm. um i have been on um, I was on SSRIs, mm -hmm. uh, type of medication yeah. since I was 13 and I, I do think that how do I'm trying to figure out how to say this. Um, so I, I, I've been off of medication for a couple of years mm -hmm. and I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think that there are people that are going to need to be on medication for the rest of their life in order to function. Mm -hmm. And there's, I don't, I don't know. I, for me, I think medication is kind of an adiaphora. Like the Bible yeah. is not saying like you should or shouldn't do it. So I think yeah. the stigma of some Christians saying that it's not good. I mean, that's not biblical. So mm -hmm. I do think much like pain relievers mm -hmm. there, you should know how it in, interferes with your body mm -hmm. um especially like side effects yeah so i think that medications in general if if they're getting you to a point where you're functioning normally then why would you not take them mm -hmm. um but if you're taking certain medications that are hindering you in other areas of your life then that's a great time to start talking to your doctor or something yeah. about either yeah. switching it yeah. or lowering it or upping it. And I've been in both camps where I've needed it in order to get through the day. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, um, <laughs> my parents could actually tell when I would miss a day of medication mm -hmm. because by the end of the day, I would literally just be sobbing. Yeah. And yeah. I and I would always say, what's wrong with me? I don't feel good. And my mom would say, did you take your meds? And I'd be like, no, I didn't. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. I do think that like we're allowed to take meds that are going to help our brains. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's important to look into yeah. um, what what it helps and what it hinders. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, the the basic. So. I, one of the passages that comes to mind for me is there's a spot in James five where it says if somebody is uh, like struggling or sick, uh, you have the elders come over and pray over them and sort of anoint them with oil. And oil at the time in the day was one of the like things that was believed to have medicinal properties that was helpful. And it's interesting that it doesn't just say pray. It's like, mm -hmm. and there's stuff that I've built into the earth that will help you. Yes. And so like, if we've subdued the earth to the point that it can improve some aspects of your mental health, or at least bring it to a functional life, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you look at that? Why would you resent that? Why wouldn't you look at that mm -hmm. as a gift from God? In the same way that if there's, so if there's a chemical, something inside of you, if you, if you had cancer and this medication helps deal with your cancer, 
nobody would ever say, well, you're spiritually weak for not just praying that away. Mm -hmm. We know there's a physical component to it. Um, and so I, I think that Christians, I would want Christians to know that uh, medication, as, as you mentioned, Hannah, is not a, there is no pill that just makes all your insecurities, <laughs> all your, uh, you know, self-loathing, all your uh, unbelief go away. That's the blood of Jesus. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. You need, right. You need something much more powerful than just a, a something in pill form. And for, so I, I want people to understand it. The most helpful thing I heard, way I heard it framed once was medication from a mental health standpoint is sort of like water wings when you're learning to swim. Mm. And so like if it prevents you from drowning, mm -hmm. but it helps you build the muscles to figure out how to do life, uh, that's a real blessing. And yeah, you're right. There are some people who will be on it for either intermittently throughout their life or on it throughout most of their life. And that's okay too, in the same mm -hmm. way that a diabetic probably going to be, maybe you can get it to the point of regulating it just through mm -hmm. nutrition. Maybe you'll be on medication your whole life and, and that's okay. And it should probably prompt gratitude, not you know, resentment or feelings oh, of sure. self-loathing and weakness or anything like that.